Like I said, feel free to uh, shift gears, try to maintain 80 to 100 RPM. Infrared camera is tracking the, uh, the LEDs that I've attached to Carson, and uh, that's creating the stick figure image that you're seeing on the screen. The uh, the red and green are the current norm the normative the current data that we're seeing: current joint angles, lateral knee movement, vertical hip travel, the plane of his torso, reach to the gr reach to the bars, uh, the relationship of his knee to his foot. Um, and basically, there's normative ranges for about half of half of these parameters, and the rest we're just looking for symmetry, right to left. All right, pedal again. Column one is your last, the last sample that we just took. Column two is your last right. They're both taken at about 220 watts. First thing we're looking at is a maximal knee extension, so how extended your knee angle is at the bottom of the pedal stroke. Basically on a road bike, we're looking for about 35 to 40 degrees of extension. You're about 31 to 34, which means your seat's too high, so we need to lower your seat. If you come down here to uh, knee forward to foot, that's sort of like the uh, plumb bob type measurement. You know, so normally the axis rotation of your knee should be over your metatarsals to within about a centimeter, you're actually showing about 11 millimeters back. It's primarily a function of the seat being too high. As we lower the seat, it's going to bring your knee forward relative to your foot. So we may not need to move your seat forward necessarily, but we'll see uh, what happens after we lower your seat. Now in terms of reach to the bars and your torso angle, road neutral in terms of a back angle is about 45 degrees. You're sitting at about 40 or 41, so you're, you're really low. In terms of reach to the bars for most road guys, um, from, your, from your wrist to your shoulder to your hip, I usually look for about 80 to 85 degrees, and you're about 86 or 87. So you're definitely on the stretched out and low side of the spectrum. So, well, go ahead and hop off. Uh, I'm going to make a slight adjustment to your cleats, um, and then I'll have you, uh, have you hop back on after I lower your seat. Okay. What the cleat placement is, uh, I try to get the, uh, the axle to run between your first and fifth metatarsals so that all your metatarsals are over the pedal axle. You get you transfer about 97% of your force through your metatarsals so you want to have those right over the uh, right over the pedal axle. So when you're pedaling, ideally your second toe, your patella and the head of your femur should all basically be tracking in the same plane. You're getting a little bit of medial movement like that. So I'm going to move your cleats, I'm going to move your feet closer to the bike to see if we can get your knees to track a little straighter. So. Cool. Okay. You can stop. That looks pretty solid. I mean, in the ideal world, we would, you know, sort of shift everything forward a little bit more. Um, but I think with the UCI limitations in this saddle, this is probably as as, as good as, as close to that as we can get. I think with, you know, if you do end up switching to the other saddle, you could sort of shift everything forward a, you know, an, an equivalent amount and uh, end up with a position that was similar torso angle, but with a more open, more open hip. Uh, the name of my business is uh, Cat One Fitness. It was uh, initially my coaching company. And then, um, you know, in 2002, when I started fitting, it basically, you know, when I left the training center and went to business for myself, it, you know, evolved into my, uh, you know, fitting and consulting business. Uh, my website is probikefitter.com or cat1fitness.com. Okay, try that.